So we picked a bad day to come here apparently. They are about to lower this uh, industrial diver down there. Looks like he's got some welding equipment and I'd imagine he's going right down there in the pools. Uh, pretty intense actually. Pretty jealous of this guy. He's got a pretty nice view of the salmon a bit. All right, see you later, buddy. What's the plan, Kel? We're gonna try hiking this boat down the trail. Launch from a little bay in there. See if we can get out to a little pinnacle. Might be um, a lot of effort compared to what we find. But it'll be a good adventure. Good thing we have a uh, optimal boat launch here. Making our job really easy. I think we gotta bring this back up when we're done. <laughs> uh, that's not gonna be fun. Woo! Nice spot though. So I think our plan is to make it over to that little pinnacle. I've never dove there. It's a bit of a swim from shore, so having the boat will be optimal. And uh, just explore this coastline. It's pretty hard to get to, so uh, yeah, having a boat here is ideal. It's a bit of a mission, but we're about to launch the boat. Uh, so better late than ever. We started this journey around nine, scouting out different areas to dive. But we're here, and hopefully we see some cool stuff. It's a bit intimidating. Run so fast. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Probably looking down about 10 meters and can see the bottom. Uh, this bay might be protected from the swell and all the water movement, but uh, hopefully the vis is a bit better out there too. So we went onto that pinnacle and some fairly big waves for this size of boat. I've uh, capsized one of these before when I was younger, and these little tinnies they take on water very, very quickly. Uh, we have our wetsuits, it's not like we'd be dangerous, we just float around, but not really worth losing a boat um, and a battery and potentially some of the gear that's in here. Uh, but no big deal, we're gonna go check the point out here, uh, see if you kind of go for another day, or if the wind ends up dying off, we'll, uh, we'll uh, creep back out here. It's a bit calmer. All right, so we are dropping the anchor, like a five minute swim from uh, where we launched the boat. So that was a lot of work for nothing, but you don't know until you try. It's not always about the destination. Sometimes it's about the journey of how you got there. I don't think that statement could apply to a better scenario than the process we went through for this dive. Loads of work, but also loads of fun. Sometimes the visibility is good from far, but far from good. But that was not the case this time. We were pretty stoked to find seven to 10 meters of clear water. It was our first time diving here, so we weren't too sure what to expect. The structure looked promising though, and that was a good sign. We dove off the point, but the train leveled off to a sandy bottom around 15 meters. Plus, the swollen sunlight made scanning for boats near impossible. As tempting as it was to explore, it wasn't worth the risk, so we stayed shallower in the protected areas. There were loads of rockfish, but the majority were quite small. Not too sure what this was. Despite not seeing many larger fish, I promised my wife some Greenling ceviche, so I loaded my gun and started hunting. Greenling are a sure thing on most dives, and the limit is three. These ones are definitely on the smaller side of what I'd harvest, but we weren't seeing anything much bigger. And this was good here, but there was no fish, uh, minus a bunch of small rockfish. Saw a couple greenling, but they were pretty small, uh, harvested though. I'm gonna try another spot down the coast a bit. Uh, don't really expect to see too, too much, but still fun. Being in the water, nice and sunny out, good viz, can't beat that. We didn't go far, but having the boat proved to be useful after all. We found a calm spot and threw down the anchor. Greenling number three. Does anyone have an ID on this seaweed? It's pretty neat. Rarely do I target rockfish on the east side of the island, but this guy looked tasty.
Its stomach was looking pretty full, and it had me curious as to what it ate. I was hoping it was organic and not some trash, and I was pretty shocked to find a massive pinpoint or crescent gunnel. I'm honestly shocked it was able to fit this in its mouth. You can argue that spear fishing is cool, but at least we don't eat our fish alive. The ocean's gnarly. We're just wrapping up our day here, cleaning up our fish, and we gotta get this boat back onto the trailer. Going downhill is the easy part, going uphill, that's gonna be a struggle. So wish us luck, because we're gonna need it. Was it worth the effort? Hell yeah. Plus, let's face it, we needed the exercise. Ah, we made it. Woo. I bet we're the first people to launch a boat down on this trail. And maybe the last. What are we gonna have, Sayla? Mmm, I have flips. Yeah, but ceviche. Ceviche? Yeah, can you say that? Ceviche. Ceviche. Can you say it, buddy? Ceviche. Ceviche. <laughs> yeah. Fish is cleaned up and ready to get chopped into smaller pieces and thrown into a bath of lemon and lime juice. Yep, another ceviche video. Fair warning, there will be more to come. My wife and I can't get enough. If I had to choose one type of food to eat the rest of my life, Mexican would be it, hands down. So flavorful. Later on that evening, we went down to the Transfer Beach Park in Ladysmith. It's the mother of all parks, massive playground, a water park, and it's situated right next to the ocean. Sailor discovered hill rolling. She did this about 10 times in a row. Oh, to be young again. This is one of our new favorites. We'll definitely be making more awesome memories here in the future. <laughs> What's the plan, Sailor? What's the plan? We're going to see salmon? I right, get off the phone. We're going to see some salmon. Leafy, you want to go see some salmon? We are here in Camel River and we're doing the annual salmon dive. Got to hike up the Canyon View Trail and jump into those pools, diving around to maybe, I don't know, five at most 10 meters and going to see all those beautiful sights. We got a good crew out here. Uh, a few of us are going to be in the water. Brought the kiddos and the dog this time too. Uh, so we're going to make the hike up there. Wish us luck, because it's not easy managing a bunch of dogs and children. <laughs> the hike to the dive spot is beautiful. It's a great place to visit on a hot summer's day. Can't wait for the kids to be walking in themselves though. But Jasmine and I got it covered for now. Get quite the seat, buddy? Yeah. Yeah. We made it here. It was a bit of a mission, hiking down with the kids. I remember that being a much shorter hike, but I guess everything takes longer with a dog and uh, two babies. See a bunch of salmon, a uh, bunch of them actually. Water looks nice and clear, but with the delayed snow melt this year with the cooler weather we had in May and June, water's flowing pretty good. Um, so a little sketchy for our kids to be in the water. I don't think they'll be getting in today. I was gonna swim out there with them, but that's not gonna happen. I'm getting pretty excited for the day Sailor and Zaya can join me in the water, even if it's just for a snorkel. But I'm definitely not gonna rush it. It turns out the fast moving water wasn't a result of the delayed snow melt. Water was being diverted down the river through the canyon as a result of required maintenance on the powerhouse tunnel at the hydro dam. This made diving quite difficult and almost dangerous to a certain extent. Luckily, I'm a strong swimmer and I'm always up for a challenge. Oh, and having a solid crew definitely helped. Sometimes the risks outweigh the rewards, but I don't think that was the case here. Epic to say the least. British Columbia is full of natural beauty. It's a shame more people don't get to enjoy these experiences. I was recently asked, why don't you guys spearfish salmon? Well, the short answer is the regulations don't allow for it. 
For some reason, gill netting and angling is looked at as a more sustainable and responsible method of harvesting. Somehow, indiscriminately catching anything that swims by or bites onto a hook is less scrutinized than selectively pulling a trigger. Yeah, there's the argument that we would have a hard time identifying our catch, but that doesn't stop gill nets from catching the endangered sturgeon out of their freezer. Plus, recreationally caught and released salmon have a fairly high mortality rate. And the amount of ghost gear left behind to entrap countless fish is a disaster in itself. I'm not trying to attack anyone's career or method of providing for the family, but I hate double standards. I choose to spearfish as I love the sustainability factor involved with it. It sucks that I'm not allowed to bring home a salmon from time to time. I do know one thing though, spearfishing takes zero responsibility for the current depressed state of the salmon populations in our province. Salmon farms good, spearfishing bad. What a joke. For the record, spearfishing in a river would be like shooting fish in a barrel, but I think ocean opportunities should exist. Being greeted by my family is the best way to wrap up a dive. As expected, the water levels are really high and it did make diving easy. Sometimes when I come here though, I get a bit bored after you know 20 minutes, but this time that didn't happen. It's a bit more excitement. Really had to work to get some good footage, but uh, I found some schools and I got under them. The trick is to be really, really slow in the water, find a little back eddy where there's not too much water flowing uh, swim right down to the bottom and then just use the rocks to crawl on and get yourself really close to a school. Any sudden movements are just going to spook. It's all about slow, steady, even movements, being really calm in the water and honestly just becoming one with nature, as cliche as that may sound. I saw that one sock guy in the school of pinks again. I saw that last time I was here, so that's pretty neat. All right, we're going to hit the road. I'm not sure what the plan is now, but beautiful day. You doing okay, Zaya? Yeah. You having fun up there? Can you carry me the rest of the way? Yeah. Thank Thanks, bud. This hike's a lot easier on the way here because your dive gear isn't wet. I think I got an extra like 40, 50 pounds on me right now. Mama, mama. Can you say airplane? Yeah. Say airplane. Yeah. See, you say airplane, goes meow. You say airplane, meow. <laughs> <laughs> The trip to Campbell River won't be complete without a stop at the pier for some ice cream. A little bit of a pro tip, I uh, get these sampler size Especially if you got kids. Especially for kids, they're yeah. like, the sample size is this big, the kid's cone's like this big. Yeah, kid's cone is like a double scoop. So yeah, sampler, more than enough ice cream for a little toddler. What a life. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I'm so happy I can offer these experiences to our kids. They may not remember them when they're older, but the ocean seed has been planted. Now, just time to watch it grow. Even if spearfishing was legal in the ocean, it would be extremely challenging, and our small community would be lucky if we collectively caught a handful each year. We would add no pressure. We made one last stop at Willow Point and then called it a day. Thanks to all my patrons and loyal viewers. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button and leave a comment. It really helps my channel grow. Peace and love.